On certain nights, if you go outside and look up into the sky, you might see a very bright light. It may look like a star, but if you're looking at the right place and at the right time, you can see the planet Mars. Mars is special because it's one of the closest planets to Earth. It's also more similar to Earth than any of the other planets in our solar system. It has a surface you can walk on, and with the right tools, people could someday live on Mars. Humans have always been interested in Mars and have explored it more than any other planet. Because of its color, Mars is often called the Red Planet. It's the fourth planet from the Sun, and Earth is the third. Because it's further from the Sun than Earth, it's very cold on Mars. Like most planets, Mars is very big, but it's about six times smaller than Earth. It has two small moons, named Phobos and Deimos. The surface of Mars is rocky and covered in red-brown colored dust. It's extremely cold and dry. There's no flowing water on the surface of Mars, and no plants or animals live there. However, there is evidence that millions of years ago water flowed on Mars, but over time it froze or evaporated. Even though there's no life on Mars, it has some amazing geographical features, which include a mountain and volcano called Olympus Mons, which is more than twice the height of Mount Everest and the second largest known mountain in the solar system. The red planet also has a gigantic canyon called Valles Marineris, which is ten times longer than the Grand Canyon and six times deeper. If it was on Earth, Valles Marineris would stretch all the way across the United States. For thousands of years, humans have been interested in Mars. Ancient astronomers such as the Sumerians, Babylonians, Egyptians, and Chinese watched Mars in the sky with wonder. The Romans named it Mars after the god of war because it was red, the color of blood. In 1877, when Mars was closest to Earth, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli used a telescope to draw a detailed map of Mars. As telescopes improved, humans learned more and more about the red planet. They wondered if it had plants and animals, like Earth, and they dreamed of visiting it someday. Science fiction authors such as Edgar Rice Burroughs imagined it having people and wrote adventures about what happened there in his book, A Princess of Mars. The first attempts to explore Mars were made by the Soviet Union in the 1960s and 1970s. The Soviet Union was the name of Russia and other nearby countries at the time. They launched nine different unmanned rockets in hope of reaching Mars. Unmanned means no humans are on the rocket. Most of the first spacecraft never made it to the Red Planet, but the Mars 3 lander did. It landed on the surface of Mars, and the Mars 5 lander landed and was able to send back some information before it stopped working. In 1964, NASA, the United States National Air and Space Administration, launched Mariner 4 and Mariner 5 to learn more about Mars. The first spacecraft failed, but the second one made the seven-month trip to the Red Planet. When it arrived, it took pictures from space and sent them back to Earth. It was the first time humans saw the surface of another planet. It was amazing! They saw craters and learned that living on Mars would be harder than they expected. More spacecraft were sent and took new pictures of Mars. With each visit, they learned more about our neighboring planet. The next goal was to land a vehicle on Mars so it could take close-up pictures and samples of the Martian air and dirt. Remember that all these spacecraft and landers were unmanned. They were robots and didn't have people on them. They were all controlled by people on Earth. Sending a human to Mars would be much more challenging and dangerous. In 1975, NASA sent two more landers to Mars and called them Viking 1 and Viking 2. They landed successfully and sent back colored pictures of the surface of Mars. They showed red, rocky land. The Viking landers also learned more about what life would be like on Mars. Next came the Mars Pathfinder mission, which landed again and this time included a rover. A rover is a robot with wheels and arms that drives around the surface of the red planet. 
it can take pictures and take samples of the dirt and air. Then it uses radio communication to send all this information across space and back to Earth. Other missions sent more probes to fly over Mars and take pictures. Then, in 2012, the Curiosity rover landed on Mars and took even better pictures and samples to prepare for future missions. While researching this episode, I learned that this month, July 2020, NASA plans to launch its new and improved rover called Perseverance. If it launches this month, it will land on Mars in February and send back whatever it learns. One of the coolest things about the Perseverance rover is it will have a small helicopter on it that will detach and fly around and explore and take pictures from the sky. Also, just this last week, China launched its first spacecraft and lander to explore Mars. Mars exploration is really exciting lately. I'm looking forward to what they discover next. The next big step with Mars will be sending humans to live and do research there. Elon Musk is a tech billionaire and visionary who has made sending humans to live on Mars the mission of his company, SpaceX. His goal is to send humans there by 2022. This is called colonization. It's a big goal, but he and his engineers have accomplished amazing things so far. He also started Tesla, which makes the famous electric cars. In 2022, if SpaceX is ready, their mission to Mars would begin by launching their Starship spacecraft attached to their super heavy rocket. It would probably take six months to get from Earth to Mars, but the engineers at SpaceX are working to make it faster. Two more Starships would launch the same year. If SpaceX reaches the Red Planet, they'll have to be prepared to live there. First, humans will need oxygen, because Mars air does not have oxygen like Earth's. They will bring some of their own oxygen, and also use special machines to pull other elements, like carbon dioxide, out of the air and convert it to oxygen. They'll also need water. One way to do this is to dig up the soil and extract water from deep in the ground or from frozen ice caps. They will also need to wear special suits because Mars air doesn't protect them from the sun's radiation, and radiation is very dangerous to the body. The red planet is also extremely cold. Their homes and suits will need to keep them warm. These habitats will also have the oxygen and air pressure the body needs to survive. And of course, humans need to eat, so they'll need to bring some of their own food at first, but if they want to live there for a long time, they'll need to figure out how to grow plants in the Martian soil so they can eat them. Many teams are already preparing for life on Mars by living in habitats in the desert on Earth. Living alone will be a challenge, and all of the astronauts will have to work as a team and find ways to get along with each other. The goal to send people to Mars is a big one, but humans have done amazing things in the past as they think big and work together. Would you like to visit a faraway place like the space station or the moon or Mars someday? What kind of skills would you need to survive in a place like this? What can you do now to prepare to explore like an astronaut or create new devices like the engineers at NASA and SpaceX? Building things requires a knowledge of math and science. It also requires creativity. There are a few ways you can develop these skills on your own or at school. Remember that even though subjects like math may not always interest you at first, understanding them can give you the ability to do amazing things. Also, teamwork is important to achieve big goals. All of the space missions require huge teams of engineers and scientists and mission control operators and astronauts to get the job done. No one achieves these feats alone. Learning to be patient and get along with your friends and family members prepares you to work well with others and on a team. This will be important for the rest of your life. 